Yo, what's up guys, welcome back to another video. It's been a bit of time once again. I had a little break because I was ill and then posted for one day and I was still a bit sick and I've had something going on. But we are back now and hopefully this is now back to the usual consistency because, I mean, yeah, it's not nice when I'm not posting, but we are hopefully back and yeah, fingers crossed we can keep these reactions up. But the first reaction I'm returning with is insane, is, uh, insane security features of the White House and... I mean, I don't know what it is at the White House. Is it like, obviously, it's where the president president lives, but at the same time, can't you do tours of the White House? I might be talking on my ass, but I swear I've seen videos of people doing tours of the White House. Maybe not. Maybe I'm actually just lying to myself. But I'm sort of assuming you can. Let me just search it. Does the White House do tours? Because if it does, for a house of the president, pro wait, does the White House do oh do tours because i mean in terms of security yeah it is first come first some in terms of security you'd probably want the president to be somewhere where there's less people coming in and out of but i assume maybe it's not actually where he stays or he or she stays where whether it's obviously it's a, a man at the moment but um yeah i don't really know to be honest because it wouldn't really make sense for them to do all their daily life things there. But I guess they've got multiple homes that they stay at and it's just occasionally when they are actually at the White House. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that is actually the spot that they will stay in at like the majority of the time. But yeah, we're going to check this out anyway and see some of the security features. Because I guess if you've got people coming in and out, you're going to have to have ways to protect the people inside. But um, yeah, we're going to jump into this. Links are in the description of my Patreon if you want to see some more of my videos. But let's just jump into this and see some of these features. Since it's where the President of the United States lives and works, it makes total sense that the White House is among the most secure buildings in the world. Like, I'm kind of thinking, is it like a puppet house? Will they actually stay in another White House a few blocks across or something? I don't know. It would make sense, but we, you just don't know. To be and they take that security beyond seriously. Here are some of the incredible measures White House security takes to ensure the safety and security of the president's mansion. Among the many things that the president does not need is the possibility of getting shot at while going over paperwork or calling prime ministers. And so, all 147 windows in the White House contain bulletproof glass. But hey, yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking, actually, because if you, if you actually just... You, know, you see the pictures of the president signing things like you, you see that sort of stuff and you're like wait there's windows behind they could easily be killed but obviously that makes sense not right? your average glass the ballistic glass used at the white house is some of the strongest available and very possibly stronger than anything us non-presidents can legally use we learned about this security measure just recently in November 2011, a man named Oscar Ramiro Ortega Hernandez grabbed his rifle, went to DC, and fired several shots at the White House from over 2,100 feet away. Damn. One actually hit one of the windows, very near to where President Obama's daughter was staying, though luckily the bullet did not make it into the building. A thick sheet of bulletproof ballistics glass, discreetly built behind the regular glass, stopped the shot in its tracks. Damn. Obviously, the White House isn't keen to tell the world exactly what types of ballistics glass they use to secure the building, but it's certainly high grade. The Vice President of Total Security Solutions, Jim Richards, summarizes that they're using level four glass, at the very least. That level of ballistics is incredibly strong, but likely not strong enough to withstand any possible attack. After all, not every gunman fires shots from seven football fields away. True. Richards believes the White House may actually be using level 8 glass, which is the strongest currently available on the market. Adding to that, he wouldn't be the least bit shocked if the government utilizes a secret, even stronger type of glass that only they have access to. After all, the government is not in the business of giving terrorists any kind of heads up whatsoever. You know how many action and spy movies feature the heroes attempting to infiltrate some secure building, like the enemy's headquarters, only to be met with infrared sensors out the wazoo? Well, the White House has those too, but good luck slinking around them like Catherine Zeta-Jones in Entrapment. That's because White House sensors aren't done up in a unique pattern, like some kind of maze. They're simply there, covering every inch of White House property. Really? They've got, they got unseeable sensors? Just dotted all around the all around the house. The second a fence jumper lands, reports reach the White House that someone has tripped the sensors. This also triggers alarms from deep underground the White House lawn as well, 
meaning White House security knows full well about any intruder hundreds of feet before the intruder even begins to approach the building. The SWAT team assigned to the White House rooftop, all of whom carry high-power sniper rifles that can nail targets up to a thousand feet away, are keenly aware of the sensors and alarms. Needless to say, they make darn sure nobody who trips the alarm gets very far on their quest. Knowing all that, next time you're watching the White House from behind that iron gate, please stay behind it for everyone's sake. Surface to air There's missiles in the White House? What? Chances are good that you've not seen the surface to air missile system around the White House. That's a good thing, because if you do see them, chances are you screwed up badly. See, what I wonder is, right, how does this compare to Buckingham Palace? Does Buckingham Palace have missile systems as well? I'm assuming maybe not. I mean, there's obviously a lot of protection for people, for, for the royal family, because you see all the guards and stuff, but still, I feel like this is definitely going to be a different level to that. And they're about to eat a missile. Yes, the White House has a missile defense system, though they rarely, if ever, talk about it. However, it's been in place since 9-11. After the devastating attacks on the Pentagon, the central DC area has become a complete no-fly zone. Wait, what happened? Was there an attack on the Pentagon? I didn't know that. Any plane that dares violate that order risks getting shot down by one of the many high-powered missile launchers in place. We know little about the missile system itself, as the White House has never officially spoken about them. The only reason we even know that they exist is that in November 2019, the White House went on lockdown due to what the Secret Service called a potential violation of the restricted airspace. A CBS news reporter named Sarah Cook tweeted a missile battery system found on a rooftop near the White House, revealing how little the government was willing to play around with this possible crisis. Picture or no picture, the White House still hasn't confirmed anything about their missile defense system, though based on that picture, it looks to be the best in the business. It's likely an Avenger defense system, the kind usually mounted onto military vehicles come wartime. Very likely the White House has tons of those big boys. Pray you never see one outside of a tweet. You've probably heard about how his stuff. Damn, to stop them getting poisoned and stuff, right? You got people tasting the food before you even have it. Okay. Eric Monarchs employed personal food tasters. I'm just thinking, imagine how good it would be to just have food made for you every time of the day. That's just, that is just like, oh, mate. Obviously, making your food isn't the worst case scenario. At least you've got food to eat, right? But just, I'm just thinking, imagine how good it would be just to wake up, you've got food made, lunch, food made. It's just, oh, that would be so good, man. But can't have it all you know to ensure nothing was poisoned if the taster sampled the food and was fine the king and queen could dine happily if the taster fell sick and died that was a sign for the royals to eat something else <laughs> Probably. while it's never been officially confirmed the white house does indeed employ food tasters to protect the president their existence came to the limelight in 2013 when president obama declined to eat at a meeting with senate republicans because his taster was not there Senator Susan Collins confirmed that he looked longingly at the meal, but due to his taster not being present, Obama did not partake in the lunch. Wow. But don't think that having a presidential taster was just an Obama quirk. News stories have mentioned tasters for every president before him, at least as far back as President Reagan. More likely, however, George Washington and everybody since has employed a taster. It only makes sense. However, a presidential food taster doesn't just protect the president from a deadly poison, but also tainted food that could simply make them sick. For example, one day we may elect a president with celiac disease or a peanut allergy. A taster would make absolutely sure that no triggering ingredients reach that president's plate. Oh, wow. In other cases... So they can taste those small little details. That's pretty interesting. I mean, I was thinking that'd be a cool job, but at the same time, there's definitely a higher, higher risk that something will happen to you. But, and also, you have, to detect, you have to detect... I can't say the word. Detect certain foods that could be could have been used in the whilst it was being made you know a taster ensures that the president doesn't eat anything that goes against their diet george w bush and donald trump are both teetotalers so tasters ensure that nothing they eat is cooked in wine or any other alcohol wait teetotalers what's that is that the president doesn't eat anything that goes against their diet george w bush and donald trump are both teetotalers what the hell is a tea is it someone who doesn't drink alcohol Is oh, a tea toe. Oh, let's say do it. The first, oh, they don't drink alcohol. Oh, damn, didn't know that. Oh, that's fair enough then. 
So tasters ensure that nothing they eat is cooked in wine or any other alcohol. It does make us wonder what happens when President Trump gets a hankering for McDonald's or Wendy's. Does the taster go through all the restaurant's burgers to ensure they're clean? If so, that poor taster would likely have quite the stomach ache for days after. All part of the job. I'm just thinking, imagine Trump pulling up at McDonald's and just going in and ordering. Imagine how funny that would be, just seeing that happen. Visiting the White House is on many people. All part of the job. I'm listen to anyone notice. Oh. Visiting the White House is on many people's bucket list, as standing outside the gate staring at the outside can only stay interesting for so long. However, if you want to actually get inside the White House and take a grand tour of every inch of the hallowed grounds, or at least the parts they're comfortable with you seeing, you'd better plan ahead. Way ahead. You can't just show up and request a tour that day. It would be way too easy for criminals, would-be assassins and general ne'er-do-wells to sneak in that way. So the White House requires that you request a tour no less than 21 days in advance. In fact, they prefer you give them even more notice, both due to the popularity of the tours and the need to vet whoever wants to enter the president's home. If so I'm going to assume when you go to this, you're not exploring where the actual pre the current president's living because it's such a big house. They've probably got their own section where that's not actually being viewed by people. But even then, it's just wild that like, you all have this ability to just go in and come that close to some like someone who's so highly protected like so surely the chance of that is like going wrong there are the chances there right but hey maybe i mean i don't know has there been any cases where there's been like attempted attacks from these tours and stuff i don't know if at all possible give at least 90 days note also i guess you're gonna get security checks when you're there as well to see if you got any weapons on you and stuff so i guess yeah it doesn't really there's no risk of much happening, to be fair. And you're more likely to get the invite to take a tour. If you're the spontaneous type who can't fathom booking anything that far ahead, no worries. There are plenty of places in Washington, D.C. that you can visit without a reservation or by booking a same-day reservation. Check out the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, the Capitol, museums galore, and that one really nice Starbucks just a few minutes away. But if your goal is to see the inside of the White House, it's best you clear your calendar months in advance. God, dogs, okay. Dogs are cute, cuddly, and make great pets. They also do great when stopping people from getting too close to the president, as evidenced by the guard dogs utilized by the White House security team. Since 1975, the president's mansion has been protected by a breed of dog called Belgian Malinois. These pups are simultaneously gentle and brutal. They're great with children and other non-threats, but when going after an intruder, they are relentless. They're big and strong, can run up to 30 miles an hour, sport a field of vision spanning 270 degrees, and can go from sitting around to zooming after a suspect in under a second. The dogs received national attention in 2014 when a fence jumper managed to evade Secret Service's attempts to tackle him. What? Since the intruder had no weapon, officials weren't allowed to shoot at him, so the only available line of defense was the dogs. Two of them, how stupid would you be, man? Why would you risk that? <laughs> Hurricane and Jordan did their job swiftly and efficiently, chasing down the intruder and allowing officials to arrest him. Unlike with their defense missiles, the Secret Service was all too eager to speak about the good dogs in their deployment. Statements congratulated Hurricane and Jordan on jobs well done and let us know that Hurricane likes his Kong toy and Jordan loves taking walks on the White House lawn. But unless you've been explicitly invited to join him on that lawn, don't. A way bigger iron One fence. of the few completely transparent aspects of the White House security is the iron fence. Standing at six foot six inches and adorned with spiky tips, the fence has proven both sturdy and capable of keeping most would-be intruders out. The problem is, most isn't good enough for the sake of true security. And several public incidents of fence jumping in recent years have showcased the need to finally upgrade the first line of defense for the first time since it was erected in 1965. In 2017, the National Capital Planning Commission officially approved renovating the iron fence. For the most part, the final product will look the same. Iron bars with spiky tips will surround the White House lawn, allowing tourists to observe the president's mansion with largely unobstructed views. However, the fence will nearly double in height, reaching 13 feet by the time the project is complete. Oh my. No longer will a decent vertical leap be enough to scale the fence. With a tip higher than a basketball hoop, it will become harder than ever to gain access to the White House lawn. It will also serve as a sterner warning than ever 
that would-be trespassers shouldn't even bother trying. As far as the Secret Service is concerned, if they can't make a good first impression, they might as well make a threatening one. Well, damn. They're going to be changing the fences, which probably does make a lot of sense, to be fair. But um, for the hundreds of millions of dollars spent on security, they still couldn't stop Omar Gonzalez in 2014 from jumping the fence, dashing across the lawn and making it into the White House, where he overpowered a Secret Service agent and then made his way through most of the first floor before being subdued. What? God damn. Title should have been known security features of the White House. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. Um, th uh, that's the thing. There's probably so many more security features that are actually like unknown, that are crazy to even fathom, that are there to protect, but you just don't know about them because they're so they're so secretive. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reaction. If you want more of this stuff, let me know in the comments. And yeah, until next time, like, subscribe, and peace.